Well, thank you so much for joining me here, Elizabeth. Well, actually, maybe I'm joining you because we're here in your house or home of business at Brick and Mortar. And I'm very, very excited to be here and hear more about this wonderful space. Thanks, Amelia. Yeah. To get us started, though, I see you've got your item of significance. Actually, okay. I'm benefiting from drinking mine. <laughs> but how about you explain a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. So I've chosen today um, a handcrafted porcelain uh, coffee cup, which we, uh, one of our fantastic local makers, uh, makes in the Adelaide Hills. Um, it's made with um, great care. Each one is completely individual. Um, it also ties together um, the whole concept, sort of the interrelated concepts of this business, which are very pretty multifaceted. So we have um, basically a retail space where local artists and makers um, have their, their work here. We also have a cafe, which is really important to sort of bring in the community around the creative activity that's happening. We have, you know, co-working and workshops and events, that kind of thing. But this is kind of representative to perhaps the crux of um, what we do here, which is, it's also the, the coffee is locally made just a couple of blocks away, just in Stepney. So it's about supporting local, local creative activity all in one little cup. That's oh. why it's my item of significance. Well, that's a very special yeah. cup. Yeah. So I love the concept of what you've done. And so you've touched on a few of those really important aspects of bringing together local, bringing the artists and displaying their work and bringing the community and providing that access. Yeah. So brick and mortar, you know, the name is really sort of cognizant, you know, of that yeah. it ex explains that, that concept that you're providing the brick and mortar for the artists to come in. That's exactly right, yeah. Yeah, so do you want to just give us a little bit of background around why and how you got into this space? It is very much about having a physical entity because I think that's where the most meaningful relationships are made, obviously, that, you know, it's so easy to do online nowadays, but I think there's a really special value um, and significance about when you get to meet people face to face and you know really get to know them and, and trust develops and from then collaborations and all kind of things flow but um, as a bit of background about um, starting up the business I don't have a background in any of this which is probably like a good place to start <laughs> uh, my background is in international policy so I spent 10 years with foreign affairs and trade um, as a diplomat and then seven years here in South Australia um, doing international policy development as a senior advisor and then um, I turned 40 and thought I really want to try something different so um, <laughs> it does sound different yeah it, it was really different foreign yeah. policy to this creative Spain. Yeah, and I think it was part of, probably part of what it was, was I've always wanted to do something entrepreneurial, but I've always had a really great job with a fantastic team, you know, security, uh, financial security, and um, and a really sort of interesting set of issues that to deal with with that. So there's never been a really good reason to, you know, I've never hated my job and really wanted to change, but I think part of it was actually being in Adelaide, which is such a creative city. Um, I grew up in Tasmania and worked mainly in Canberra. Um, after that. Um, and so coming to Adelaide where there's always stuff going on, there's great cultural institutions and in the probably nine years that I've been here now it really feels that there's been a critical mass building of really interesting people doing interesting things here and staying here rather than necessarily going across to the eastern states which has sort of been a traditional kind of I guess career pathway around that. So it seems to be with sort of the arts industry that when you're a young emerging artist there's a fair amount of support and um, your financial assistance, opportunities, that kind of thing. And once you hit a certain sort of age or cut off, or equally, if you are ready now, if you've developed your product or concept and want to take that into a potentially commercially viable self-sustaining, so it's not an ongoing side gig to your, you know, real nine to five job kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, there seem to be a lot of um, obstacles or hurdles there. So in my head, I thought, let's do something where you have a, a co-located environment where you have customers who come in for various reasons. They come in for coffee, so that would involve a cafe. They come in to do workshops or creative activity. Um, they come in to meet the maker, so they can actually make that personal connection and create opportunity through that and learn people's story and understand what it is to support your local economy. Um, and that's sort of, you know, add in a co-working element too, so you have the more sort of service delivery end of creative enterprise. It's a beautiful feedback loop in a sense of mm. what everyone contributes to the space in different ways. You saw a gap in the market, and but then, you know, running business is hard. Running mm. business is really channel challenging. What is it that keeps you motivated in this? You know, hard work is so fine. Like I've always worked in a job that has requires really long hours, but I think when you can see it, um, see the results, that's incredibly motivating. When you, you know, you put in the hours and you put in the effort, and then you can see something come to fruition 
and you know that you've generated that. It's really actually super exciting. And when you can generate more so opportunity for other people who are in your community, then I get a real buzz out of that as well. Because this is such a multi-layered business and, and model, you know, how diverse is that community and what are the different groups that make it up? Yeah, it is. It's sort of fourfold, I suppose, in a way. Um, primarily, you know, the most obvious communities are customers. Um, so I'm always incredibly indebted. Like there's, there's so many opportunities and there's so many great establishments in Adelaide. Um, I'm always very grateful when people choose to come back to brick and mortar and, and support us that way. Mm. Um, obviously, without our customer base, we would no longer be. So we've just turned two years old as, as a business. Um, well, congratulations. Yeah, it's really super exciting. <laughs> actually, it's great. Um, yeah, so part of that is is our customer base. And I think also it's really important to be really responsive to your customer base as well. And I think because people who do support us are very invested in our concept and what we do. And it's really more of a conversation rather than a, you know, customer business owner um, feedback session. It's more mm. just like, yeah, this is not what so we bad. like. No, it's not so bad. It creates a real understanding about um, who they're supporting and why they are and you know, the background to the product and what motivates people. That's incredibly valuable for makers as well because they can um, see firsthand and experience firsthand how people interact with their product. So you know, can see how people touch it, how they feel it, what they're drawn to, what they like about the story, where they'd like to see new products developed, which normally if you're in a, a sort of regular retail situation, you might not get that feedback for a couple of months down the track after you, know, you need to restock or that mm. kind of thing. So that's really nice. Um, and then of course, upstairs we have our co-working um, element as well and that's really great because people might come here because uh, for example they are interested in the sustainability kind of aspect of what we do and then they'll see that we've got you know, architects here who um, have a carbon neutral approach and or we've got some fantastic visual artists up here or they might need some graphic designing done for a project they're doing and because they're using a casual free work co-working desk they'll you know, feel um, confident enough to go and have a chat and say would you like you know, have that sort of initial client kind of conversation, which is great. So, mm. yeah, it's a it's a real um, everything is incredibly interrelated, and that's how it's meant to work. It just really makes me really happy when I see that it is working that oh, way. Good. Yeah, and of course, sorry, I should also mention um, people who are collaborators, and um, for example, council um, allows me to have this space at a very subsidised rate, which has made quite frankly the whole project possible and they've been fantastic in that sense. So I think it's really important to acknowledge too that mm. they are a really important part of the community as well mm. and you know a part of the reason they're supporting us doing this is because they want to see more creative activity in the Norwood Paytons of Peters area as well so it's a really concrete tangible way of allowing that to happen while supporting small business rather than putting government money into something that um, takes away from entrepreneurs or small business owners who are trying to do that in a really genuine building business, building a local economy sense. And you mentioned earlier when you were talking around people meeting the makers yeah. and your community coming in and, and having those conversations and hearing their stories. Yeah. How important do you think that storytelling aspect is for this, these relationships? From just looking from the perspective of our customer base, um, a lot of people are already there and they, they really engage with that anyway because they're naturally people person or they really value um, having something unique and handmade um, that's not disposable. Um, other people, I think, are really pleasantly surprised by the experience. Um, people who perhaps might be um, a little bit shyer or less sort of used to having a chat to people in the creative sphere. Um, I think because it's such an easy thing to do and everyone's so friendly, mm. um, it's actually a really nice um, experience for most people and they come away with the sense of, oh, I, I know something really interesting about this person and who would have thought there was this? And so then you have that personal connection and. I hope you know, the way I'm explaining it, it does come across as really genuine because it is a really genuine experience and I think a very fulfilling one for both sides of that conversation. The reason I call this brick and mortar as we discussed before is because of that face to face. For example, I could speak to you as a maker and we could speak about opportunities that I might be able to do for you and which would, could be in like, you know, accelerating your business or I might know someone if you're looking for someone to you know, cover you with insurance, just things like that you wouldn't necessarily um, have front of mind. <coughs> but when you have a a relaxed, normal conversation, then I think you, ex you ex I guess, you explore things more naturally or there's more of a, a I guess, a random effect, I think, mm. which is really nice. Mm. Yeah. I, I'm a strong believer in the mm. interpersonal as well. But, yeah. you, and, and it's interesting though, because also I spend a lot of time in the digital online space. Yeah. So it, and it is, and you mentioned that, that, that ne real need for an integrated, balanced approach so that it's not skewed. Absolutely. E either way, it's about trying to allow for both. What do you think has been in, in building this business and building your community? Mm. What's been your biggest challenge? 
It's a really good question. Mm. Um, <laughs> probably twofold. Doing this um, from scratch, I think, where you, I mean, I didn't have any connections in the creative sector at all because my, I guess my work, my professional life hadn't crossed into that at all. So it was really building community from ground zero, I mm. suppose. Um, and part of that was, a lot of that was doing it in person, going and meeting people and having chats with people in markets letting them know about what we're doing in the space and bringing people on board about the concept and then actually converting that into people on the ground willing to take that risk, which is actually really an enormous thing to do to a brand new concept, um, a brand new space, no kind of necessary credibility in that space. It was a matter of either just throwing up your hands and going, this has suddenly become too hard, I'm going to walk away, it's not what I thought it was going to be, or damn it, I'm actually going to, I'm really going to pursue this and really try and make it work. And, and here we are two years later and yeah. we're still here, which is great. So did that mean yeah. you had to learn how to make some coffees? And no, I never did that because <laughs> I knew that would, that would have, no, that would suck. I would, <laughs> <laughs> I've always been really particular about not serving bad coffee here because uh, hilariously, that's actually one of the really critical elements of the space and one of the reasons I chose Coffee Cup as, you know, because it's, it's what brings people in. A lot of people just come in for coffee and, and chat and meet people and then they'll start to look at the retail space and think, oh, mm. you do workshops too, that's really interesting and mm. then you can have a chat and it's that sort of, I guess, soft entry point, mm. um, which is really nice. And it is good coffee. So Thank you. And yeah. having good coffee is Great. important. I it is. Well, you can't not do that in Adelaide, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as online platforms mm. go, what, what are you using and what's the one that you're mostly using? For us, um, it seems, I think Instagram works best for us in the sense that it's very visual and I think the definitely the local Adelaide creative community engages really strongly in there. So the potential to have conversations and chats and, and you know, that what's actually really enjoy about it, enjoyable about it, meeting people, mm. meeting people online, that sounds weird, but you know what I mean, like in a, <laughs> <laughs> in a professional capacity. In a professional way, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, it has been great through Instagram, uh, much less so now that it's been bought by Facebook and the algorithm's been introduced. You know, I'm really strongly um, an advocate of independent media um, and, you know, quality journalism, just investigating and learning the full story, that kind of thing, which takes time. Mm. I think that's the other thing too. So I feel kind of the same way with Instagram now. It's just becoming a less interesting platform in the sense that what the algorithm offers up for you to see is very rarely what I've actually subscribed mm. to look at, but it's what is, is ranking popularly, something like that. Yeah. How do you think then you utilise the digital media yeah. but still maintain that human connection? I think it's really important to um, be very transparent and communicate what you're thinking to your community. Um, you may lose some people along the way, or you may gain some people along the way, but I think it's really important not to try and appeal to everybody all of the time. Essentially, this is an experiment, um, brick and mortar. Uh, so it's about seeing what happens when you try and run a commercially viable business without, in, in the creative industries um, arts sector, without relying on funding or grants or anything like that. Uh, so I think it's really important to be really upfront about what you're trying to do and you know the main part of what I'm trying to do is to create opportunity for artists and creatives and also to bring people into a creative community because I think there seems a lot of people feel that there's a divide between like, oh, I'm not creative you know and I've said that numerous times I can't draw I can't paint I can't sing or do any of those things but I think everyone can contribute in their own way so this is probably my manifestation of being creative. And I think it's interesting there as well, you're talking about running a business in the creative space. And I think sometimes in the creative space that the business mm. and making money side mm. can almost be like a dirty word. Absolutely. Is that something that you've experienced? And yeah, absolutely. And I'm completely unapologetic about that. So this is me taking a massive financial risk um, to, to do this and, and a huge investment of my personal capital. So um, I, I will never apologise the fact that I need to run this um, as a viable business and obviously that takes time and there's you know you speak to anyone in hospitality or retail there is a lag until you start to to become break even and then still you start to take make a profit but um, I really want to remove that stigma that mm. somehow being viable is not creative I think the end game for everyone who wants to explore their creativity is to be able to make that um, a self-sustaining business model for themselves and is that something that with the creators and the makers you offer training around that to try and and help remove the stigma as you say yeah i guess we haven't done any sort of particular training on that we run a lot of workshops some are creative and some are professional development so some of that is around realizing your goals how to do it business planning that kind of thing a lot of it is is walking the talk mm. yeah sort of having those discussions around 
for example, I think you underprice your work. I know you think it's something that everyone can do and therefore it doesn't have much of a value, but really this is incredibly valuable because look, it's unique and it's, you know, it's highly valued and mm. think about the time that you put into that, think about the materials you use, think about the tax that you're going to pay on that and then think about, you know, you don't have super, you don't have, you know, paid leave. Like you've got to factor all those things in. So we have more of those discussions on a one-to-one -one basis. We touched on it a little bit and you mentioned, you know, you've got the, the coffee shop and that was quite a strategic move of, yeah. of bringing and drawing people in as yeah. a soft entry point. Yeah. What do you think then, once you've got these people in, then motivates them to become mm. customers? I think um, a, a lot of it is actually the level of customer service um, because I have uh, seven staff in my cafe. They're all fabulous young women. They're um, very dedicated to what we do. People engage with you if they really like your concept and how you deliver it. I think um, you can't appeal to everyone all the time. So you just have to follow your vision and do it the very, very best you can. Um, that's not always going to be perfect, but certainly as long as you're putting 100% effort in. And also I think probably bringing things that are new in all the time uh, just keeping it fresh so you know most weeks we'll have something you have a new maker or we'll have a new event or um, we'll be exploring something different so I think it's also keeping it fresh so there's a reason for people to come back and visit you again. Hmm. Um, okay well I feel like we have covered everything sure. but before I let you off the hook completely yep. I'd yep. love to finish in conclusion yeah, yep. with Elizabeth be the drop tip so your yep. be the drop tip is your top communication sure. connection tip so what yep. is Elizabeth's be the okay. drop tip? Particularly as a you know very fresh business owner in a in a new sector that um, I haven't been in before, I think where things have gone best is where I've followed my instinct, um, and that's because you know how you want things to be, um, and it also means it's a very genuine offering if you do that. Uh, you'll get a lot of advice from experts in the field where you should be doing this and you should be doing that, and make sure that your social media feed is totally coherent and has the same colour scheme. And I just think take it for what it's worth, but but also let it go when it doesn't feel right, I think. Yeah. Um, and I think probably the other element about actually implementing that and about creating um, community is being be really prepared to um, engage with everybody. I think it's really important and do that in person as well as in social media as well. But um, I think never never feel that, never prejudge anyone that they might not be a right fit. I think the one of the beauties of, of having somewhere which is essentially a, a base for creative community is that um, Everyone has something to offer, and that's all equally valuable. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much oh, for having us you. here yeah. and for joining me. Well, it was heaps of fun. Thanks so Great. much, Amelia. Cheers. Good.